What was the genetic makeup of the incredible corded bear culture of Europe? Well, firstly, what actually was the corded bear culture? Now, the corded bear culture refers to quite a broad archaeological zone across Europe, dated from around 3000 BC to 2350 BC. It covered a vast area, from a contact zone with the Yamnaya culture to the east, just north of the Black Sea, I have made various other videos on the Yamnaya that will link above, through large parts of northern Europe and into parts of Scandinavia. Its territory can be broadly described as stretching from the Rhine River in the west to the Volga River in the east. The middle Niebuhr culture served as a bridge culture between the Corded Ware and the Yamnaya cultures. In general, the Corded Ware culture is considered to be a likely vector for the spread of many of the Indo-European languages into Europe. It's a culture that has a few names, and in Scandinavia it's often referred to as the single grave culture due to its burial practices. There's an offshoot culture as well in Scandinavia that's often referred to as the Battle Axe culture. The name Corded Ware was coined by a German archaeologist in the 19th century, derived from its cord-like impressions or ornamentation characteristic of its pottery. These are some examples of Corded Ware pottery, and you can see the beautiful cord-like patterns. Now it's important to note that the Corded Ware culture wasn't necessarily a, a unified culture as such, and given its geographical breadth, that's perhaps not a major surprise. It was connected and interacted with numerous other archaeological cultures across Eurasia, such as the Bell Beaker culture that was more to the west. Some common traits that we see in the Corded Ware culture include similar burial practices, distinctive pottery with cord decoration, and unique stone axes. But what actually were these burial practices? Well, the Corded Ware culture practiced single burial, hence why it is often referred to as the single grave culture, with the deceased usually being accompanied by a battle axe, amber beads, and pottery vessels. Other grave goods also included wagons and sacrificed animals. Burial occurred in flat graves or below small tumuli in a flexed position. On the continent, males lay on the right side, females on the left, with the faces of both orientated to the south. However, in Sweden, and also parts of northern Poland, the graves were orientated north-south, mainly on their left side and women on the right side, both facing east. Now, what about the origins and the genetics of the Corded Bear culture? Well, the first thing to note, and annoyingly so for me that had to research this video, is that it is not straightforward, and I soon found this out when I, when I tried to research this video. Um, so one of the main takeaways we can take up front is essentially that the Corded Bear culture was very much a melting pot in the genetics of ancient Europe in the early Bronze Age. And it was influenced by forces to the east, to the west, and also previous cultures, such as the Funnel Beaker culture and the Globular Amphora culture. The nature of the Corded Ware culture being such a melting pot means it's hard to get a precise breakdown, a complete roadmap of the Corded Ware people, but there is some main points we can note. The first thing to note is there is a debate within the academic literature as to the origins and the genetic makeup of the Corded Ware people. One line of argument that's more of the traditional line of argument basically suggests that the Corded Ware people were descendants of the Yamnaya, particularly Yamnaya males that had migrated from north of the Black Sea into the territory of the Corded Ware people and in modern day Germany, Poland, etc. These male Yamnaya migrants that migrated westward then married women from farming communities in what became the Corded Ware culture. A study published in Nature in 2015, for instance, argued that Western and Eastern Europe came into contact around 4,500 years ago as the late Neolithic Corded Ware people from Germany traced 75% of their ancestry to the Yamnaya, documenting a massive migration into the heartland of Europe from its eastern periphery. By extending their model to a three-way mixture, they estimated that the ancestry of the Corded Ware people was 79% Yamnaya-like, 4% Western hunter-gatherer, and 17% early Neolithic. This study did caution, however, that some of the individuals studied may not have been directly ancestral to Corded Ware individuals from Germany. It is possible that a more Western Yamnaya population or an earlier pre-Yamnaya steppe population may have migrated into Central Europe, and future work may uncover more missing links in the chain of transmission of steppe ancestry. Another study from 2015 published in Nature looked at the population genomics of Bronze Age Eurasia, and also noted strong genetic links between the Corded Ware culture and the Yamnaya. 
Populations in northern and central Europe were composed of a mixture of earlier hunter-gatherer and Neolithic farmer groups, but received Caucasian genetic input at the onset of the Bronze Age. This coincides with the archaeological well-defined expansion of the Yamnaya culture from the Pontic Caspian steppe into Europe. This admixture event resulted in the formation of peoples of the Corded Ware and related cultures, as supported by negative admixture F3 statistics when using Yamnaya as a source population. Now if you want ad-free videos and also your name in the credits of my videos, please consider supporting my work on Patreon and helping me make better videos. Please check out the top link in the video description below for more information and thank you for your support. Now on with the video. Now incidentally that I'll quickly note, this study also touched on lactase tolerance and the presence of a certain allele that basically supports lactase tolerance that potentially originated in the steppe area. I have touched on this previously, connected to the Yamnaya culture, but the Cordyware culture may have had a, a relatively high amount of lactase tolerance within it um, compared to other populations of Europe, as the study noted. It looked at a particular allele associated with lactase tolerance, i.e. the ability to digest milk into adulthood, in particular RS498235, and noted it was low in Bronze Age Europeans in general, but highest in the Corded Ware culture and the closely related Scandinavian Bronze Age cultures. In general, this study found that the Bronze Age steppe cultures showed the highest derived allele frequency amongst ancient groups, in particular the Yamnaya indicating a possible step origin of lactase tolerance. So these studies essentially paint the picture that the Cordyware culture are descendants of the Yamnaya culture and they're very closely connected, albeit it does note that the Cordyware culture did still retain a, a decent degree at least of, of ancestry from earlier Neolithic people of Europe, but still a large influx of the Yamnaya and a very strong connection to the Yamnaya. This view has been challenged however. Barry Cunliffe, for instance, the Emirates Professor of European Archaeology at Oxford University, as well as other scholars, have argued that the available corded ware samples do not carry paternal haplogroups observed in Yamnaya male specimens, and thus corded ware populations could not be directly descended from a mass migration of Yamnaya males. Individuals from the Pontic Caspian steppe associated with the Yamnaya culture carry mostly R1B haplotypes, whereas most corded ware individuals that have been studied so far carry R1A haplotypes, although some do carry R1B. So what can we make of all this? Well, in recent years there's a, a growing theory that potentially the corded ware culture, instead of being a direct descendant of the Yamnaya culture, basically existed and grew in parallel to the Yamnaya. So there was lots of crossover and mixing between the two cultures, but essentially the corded ware culture could have evolved essentially independently to some degree as a parallel culture to the Yamnaya culture, as opposed to being directly descended from the Yamnaya culture. A more recent study from 2020 gives us some insights into this, published in Scientific Reports, entitled Corded Ware Cultural Complexity Uncovered Using Genomic and Isotopic Analysis from Southeastern Poland. They essentially sequenced the genomes of 19 individuals located in the heartland of the Corded Ware Culture Complex region, Southeastern Poland. This study found that there was a stronger continuity with earlier Neolithic populations than previously observed, but still the presence of the Yamnaya is detected. In contrast to observations by Eurus et al, we did not find mitochondrial lineages specifically linked to Yamnaya pastoralists. Instead, most of the mitochondrial DNA lineages found in a sample may be associated with European Neolithic farming groups, as is in the case for the Western and Corded Ware sample in the earlier study. Our results would indicate a stronger continuity with earlier Neolithic populations than previously observed. In other words, our study detected traces of an evident incorporation of local individuals into the migrating groups. However, the funerary rituals seem to have been affected in limited extent as the burials exhibit the typical corded wear pattern in all cases examined. The Y chromosome haplogroup lineage R1BM269 or RL11 are characteristic of Yamnaya and Belbeaker individuals and they were particularly widespread throughout Eurasia and the Bronze Age and thereafter. 
Curiously, the haplogroup is uncommon among other published corded bear complex individuals from Europe, including in Germany, Poland, Bohemia, Estonia and Lithuania, and is associated with the later bell beaker communities. We see the inclusion of Yamnaya genetic signals, but again in a different manner than what has been shown in adjacent regions. These results indicate a higher level of corded wear culture continuity with earlier Neolithic individuals than those previously studied. The results also show that the corded wear culture groups exhibit an influence of the steppe world, i.e. in individuals with specific Y chromosome. Later, the influence of the bell beaker culture communities was stronger. This study then goes on to note a very important point, the geographical variation and the impact of the Yamnaya migrations. Our results emphasise the different impacts the Yamnaya migration event had on different populations across Europe, i.e. the genetic legacy that the Yamnaya process left varies greatly between regions and cultures. The southeastern Polish corded wear culture individuals are significantly more closely related to the Yamnaya than the corded wear culture individuals from the Polish lowland, supporting the differentiation between the various corded wear culture groups from Central Europe. This study also goes on to note a connection between the corded wear culture and the Afanasievo complex, a culture further east of the Yamnaya that existed in southern Siberia between around 3300 and 2500 BC. It should be noted that the Yamnaya culture and the Afanasievo culture were closely related, however. As the study noted, the most unusual signal identified is the one between the corded bear culture and the Afanasievo complex. This genetic incorporation from a steppe population further east than the Yamnaya culture is novel for these parts and suggests a corded bear culture population structure and history more complex than previously thought. Although our results should be treated with caution due to not just low number of samples, but the appearance of the same signal in individuals that predate steppe expansions and are geographically more widespread. Our findings are in alignment with the recent archaeological reviews suggesting lesser impact of the Yamnaya event than estimated in earlier genomic studies. The corded wear culture ancestry exhibits links both to common mitochondrial DNA lineages of the initial Neolithic, but also to those assimilating and replaced by the Yamnaya pastoralists. Another study from 2021 seems to echo this emerging picture in a paper titled Dynamic Changes in Genomic and Social Structures in 3rd Millennium BC Central Europe, where they studied 271 human genomes dated between 4900 and 1600 BC from the European heartland, Bohemia. We show that early corded wear were genetically exceptionally diverse, some resembling globular amphora and the Yamnaya with a few also falling outside of previously sampled Central European Neolithic genetic diversity. Such a notable diverse signal is likely the result of the agglomeration of people from diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds into an archaeological similar yet polyethnic or plural society. Important factors in ethnic identity include ancestry, history, ideology and language. The level of genetic differentiation, i.e. time since common ancestor, between early corded wear individuals with high and no-step ancestry implies long biological isolation and hence different histories. The finding of globular amphora-like and yamnaya-like genetic profiles in early corded wear suggests integration of people who came from ideologically diverse societies i.e. neither cultures practice strong genetic differentiation and mortuary practices, unlike corded wear. It is likely that the globular amphora culture and the corded wear Yamnaya individuals spoke different languages, meaning the early corded wear society in Bohemia encompassed people who had demonstrably different histories, likely originating from ideologically diverse cultures who spoke different mother tongues. Now, what does this all actually mean? What are some main key takeaways that we can take from all this research? Some of you may be like, WTF, what is going on here? Um, there's, there's so much contradictory information and, and so much nuance to, to all this research. And I think basically the experts can't fully figure it out, which is probably one of the main takeaways. But there is some, some general points we can note. And, and I boiled it down to five main points, five key takeaways from the genetic makeup and, and DNA profile of the corded wear culture. 
Firstly, the corded bear culture was very much a melting pot of Europe, and as a complicated genetic landscape, they integrated various peoples of different backgrounds. Secondly, the corded bear culture probably does not derive as much of its ancestry from the Yamnaya culture as previously thought, but there is still a step component in their ancestry, and crossover between the cultures and zones was present, and quite common. Thirdly, the Corded Bear culture retains a good amount of ancestry from the earlier Neolithic populations of Europe as well, and migrants integrated with the local population to a large extent, as opposed to replacing them. Fourthly, there is a large geographical variation in the genetic makeup of the Corded Bear culture, with the influence of the Yamnaya migrations not evenly distributed, and this may perhaps explain the different findings and interpretations in different studies. Fifthly, the Corded Bear culture probably had different influences on it outside of the Yamnaya culture, perhaps from the Afanasievo culture for example, although this culture is very genetically similar to the Yamnaya culture. Now the final point I want to make is the link between the Corded Bear culture and a later culture known as the Syntasta culture. They lived around the southern Urals, dated to around 2200 to 1900 BC. This culture is widely regarded as the origin of the Indo-Iranian languages, whose speakers originally referred to themselves as Ari or Ari. The earliest known chariots have been found in Sintashta burials, and the culture is considered a strong candidate for the origin of the technology, which spread throughout the old world and played an important role in ancient warfare. Now, one main theory is that the Sintashta culture was formed by the eastward migration of peoples from the Corded Ware culture, but this is a story for another time. Now, speaking of the Yamnaya culture, what are the origins and the genetic makeup of the Yamnaya people themselves? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell. To support my work on Patreon, please check out the top link in the video description below, and you'll get exclusive benefits such as ad free videos and also your name in the credits of my videos. Thanks again for watching, please tell your friends and family about this channel, and I'll see you next time.